Hey everybody, this is Mark from PCClassesOnline.com. I am super excited about today's class because I get to tell you about one of my favorite websites ever. It's called Canva.com. And I know a lot of you out there need to create graphics all the time. You need to create graphics for things like an upcoming event. Maybe you need to make a poster. Maybe you need to make an image for your website. Uh, or maybe you need to just make a picture to post on Facebook for something. But either you don't have something like Photoshop because it's too expensive or too complicated, or maybe you just need to get done faster and easier than that. Canva is a great option for you. I think you're going to really like it. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make a slide or an image for a family camp out for a church just to use it as an example. And as we walk through making it real quick, you're going to learn how easy it is to use Canva. So let's just jump right into it. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to go to canva.com and when you get there, it's going to ask you to make an account. So go ahead and do that. And after you get done making your account, then it gives you the option here at the top to create a design. Now what it wants to do is it wants to find out what kind of design you're trying to create and then it's going to set up your canvas or your workspace in the right pixel dimensions for whatever you're trying to make. For example, if you're trying to make a social media uh, uh, item, it's probably going to be 800 by 600. Or maybe if you want to make a slide presentation, it's going to be 1024 by 768 and so on. So there's a poster and Facebook cover and Facebook post Instagram. But just in case you think that there's only six, check this out. Click more. And there are all kinds of other options for you to choose. U.S. letter and presentation and letterhead and posters and food and drink menus, uh, business cards, YouTube channel art, and on and on and on. So you can pick something that they've already made or they've already set up for you to get a really great start on it. However, today, what we're going to do is we're going to create a slide for a projector in a church auditorium. And we already know that that's going to be a specific pixel size. So we're going to go up here. We're going to click this right here, Use Custom Dimensions. And we're going to type in the pixels width and height that I need. Now, I want to stop here for just a second because... A lot of people that I work with need to create images for their website, maybe for a slider or a header image. This is where you would go to type in the dimensions that you need to use that's specific for your website. So when you come here, click on Use Custom Dimensions and type in those uh, pixel dimensions here. In this case, I'm going to do 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to click Design. And then it's going to open up a canvas for me to start working on. So we're just going to start right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink down the canvas just a little bit uh, on the zoom level so I can see a little more of it. Down here on the bottom left corner, you can click this minus or plus so that you can see a little bit more of it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add my background image. So what you do uh, to add a background image is you go to either uploads if you want to upload a picture you already own or you can search from their over 1 million images uh, and you can use one of theirs and you can buy it from them and their picture their pictures are just a dollar a piece so it's going to be really hard to beat that anywhere so for example i'll stop for a second let's say you needed to do camping let's see if there's actually any good images here i haven't tried um, let's see what comes up so look at this so you could use like this image right here this one's free so if you click on it, it's going to drop right into this area and all you would do is drag the corners and make it fill your whole space. That's a great option. Or you can go through any one of these and these are all a dollar a piece. And when you use one of these, let's say you click on it, it's going to have this watermark on it. And that watermark is going to be there. But when you go to download it, when you're all done, at that point, you can buy whatever pictures you have chosen and the watermark will not be there anymore. So that's how that works. But in this case, I'm going to go to Uploads, and I'm going to use this picture that I've already uploaded. Put it right here, and I'm going to grab these corners. I'm going to drag the corner out, and I'm going to see how big I want this. Let me just go a little bit past the edges here. I probably want it something like, I don't know, something like that. Then I'll click off of it, and that's pretty good. I like that. Now I'm going to add some large text right up in here. I'm going to say Family Campout right there. So what I would do next is go over to text over here on the left, click text, and it gives me these three basic options, maybe a header and then a subtitle and a little bit of body text. 
all that's doing is it's going to when I click on it, it's going to throw some text over there um, in a pre-made size, but I can change everything about that text. It just is a quick way to get there. So I'm going to click Add Text, and as you see, it adds this text that's gray, and uh, I'm not even sure what font that is, but we're going to change that in just a minute. So I'm going to drag it up here to this area where I'd like to put it. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to type Family Camp Out. And I actually do want it on two lines, so I'm actually going to hit enter in between. That's good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to white. So I'm going to select all of it and then go up here and click this little uh, pick a color option. And you can either pick some pre-chosen colors here or if you click the plus button, you can choose whatever color you want anywhere in here and just find the color you want. And if you happen to know the color code, you can actually put in the color code there. In this case, I just want it white. So I'm going to go up here and click white. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to change the font and I also want to center it and I want to change the spacing between the two lines. So let's choose a different font. I think I, there's one in here. I think it's called permanent marker. So I'm going to go down to P and choose permanent marker. That's good. And then I want to make it larger. So I'm going to go up here to this font size, click here, and I'm going to choose something like, I don't know, maybe 80 perhaps. Oh, that might be a little big. Let's go down to 72. That's pretty good. I'm going to drag it over a little bit. And now I want to center it. So I'm going to hit this down arrow here. And I want to go, see right now it's on left, then there's center and right. I'm going to choose center. And then I want to make these two lines closer to each other. So I'm going to choose this option called text spacing. And then you can choose, you can change the spacing between each letter and you can also change the spacing between each line. So you see here, if I click and drag this, you're going to see that this is going to get closer together. I want it pretty close. So I'm going to do something like, I don't know, maybe there. That's good. And I will maybe drag it a little bit farther over here. That's great. Now I want to add the date and some other information underneath this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click add subtitle text. And just like before, it added it in there. Now here's a little key. If you click away from the item so it's not selected anymore, uh, now you see the background is selected here. I'm going to click off of it. And then when nothing is selected, when I roll over this text, it turns into the four-way arrow. Then I can drag it. You see that? If it's actually, let's say the background selected like this and I try to drag the text, my back, oh, it actually worked. Never mind. Sometimes it grabs the background and moves it instead. So just be careful what you're actually uh, grabbing there. In that case, it worked great. Another little feature I love is when I'm dragging it over here, it automatically gives me that guideline and it kind of pops to that guideline and shows me uh, that it's centered below the text above. And that's really nice. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say, I don't know, June 5th through the 7th, 2015. I'll highlight all of that. I'm going to center it again. And then I'm also going to change the color and the font. Now for this particular one, I, I think I want, there's one up here. I'm going to go all the way to the top, and I'm going to go to use this one called Aleo. And then I want it a little bolder. So I'm going to go down here and see there's a bold option right here, and then italics, underline, and that kind of thing. I'm going to choose bold. And then I want to make it, I'm going to make it like a yellow. I'm going to try to kind of mimic one of the yellows in this tent over here. I'm not going to be real exact, but I'm going to kind of guess over there. So I'm going to click the little plus arrow here, and I'm going to find a yellow that might be in here. And that's good enough for now. And I'll click off of that. I want to make it a little bigger also. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to choose, we'll see how big, maybe something like 36. We'll see. Yeah, that's probably good. And we'll do it somewhere in there. And then I want to then do some more subtext. So there's two ways to do it. I can either go over here and add subtitle text again, or I can click on this one and then hit the down arrow here. And I'm going to go down here to copy. And that way it'll already choose the same font that I'm already using and it'll get me a little farther ahead. So I'm going to choose copy and it puts another option, another copy of it out there. I'm going to drag it right below it. I'm going to double click on here. I'm going to change it back to white. And you guys can see where I'm going here. I'm going to change it to a light version, and I'm going to change. I'm going to make it quite a bit smaller. Um, 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this uh, bold like the other one, because I'm going to put the location here. You see, it's already bolded. Okay, good. So I'm going to say I'm going to call it Mahogany Grove Group Site. That's where it's going to be located. We're going to go down here, maybe a little bit farther down, and then I'm going to copy this again. And I'll drag it below here. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up the rest of this to show you how I do uh, the rest of it so you don't have to watch it all in real time. But I think you'll pick up the little keys because I'm just doing the same thing over and over. All right, there's one more thing I want to show you here, and that's how to add a logo down here in the bottom left. Now, in this case, this is something important. I've uploaded the logo for this particular church already uh, into my uploads area because it has a transparent background. So any item that has a transparent background, you'll be able to throw right on top of another image. Unfortunately, at this time, Canva cannot create a transparent background for you. So Right now, you'll have to do that some other way. I've heard that that option is coming, but for now, it's not there, at least at the time of recording. So I'm going to go over to Uploads, and I'm going to grab this particular logo right here. And you see that it has a transparent background already. So I can just drag it right down here and resize it a little bit. And there we go. And that's pretty much done. So it looks great. And all I have to do now, by the way, you see that it's always saving my work at all times. So I don't have to even worry about that. But if I would like to download it, I go up here to the download button and click that. And then I have two options, download as an image, which actually is a PNG in terms of the format. Unfortunately, you can't choose other items or other uh, formats at this time. Maybe that'll be in the future, like a JPEG or something. But for now, you can download it as an image or a PNG. Sorry, I didn't actually mean to click that, but the other option is to download it as a PDF. So when you click that, it's preparing your design and at that point, if you had used any pictures that you need to purchase, it would give you the option to purchase them. Then it automatically opens up to wherever I want to save it. I've actually done this before, so I'm going to call this Family Campout 3. And it has saved it for me, and I'm all done. If I'd like to share it on Facebook, I can post it directly from here or tweet it out or send it as an email to one of my friends. And uh, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you've enjoyed learning how to use Canva. I think it's great. There are so many other things built into it that I didn't show you today, but hopefully this will give you enough information to get rolling and start making pictures of your own. If you enjoyed today's class, there are three things that you can do that would really help us be able to keep classes like this free for everybody. The first thing you can do is like this video. You can also subscribe to our channel so that you get notified every time a new class comes out. And the third thing you can do is visit our website at pcclassesonline.com. Have a great day. Until next time, class dismissed.